Hi, I've got a question from a student on UTS Online about uh, practice paper one, question four, for the FRA final exams. And I've written a response, but I think I should probably talk through this since the writing might seem a little bit complicated. So let's address a few issues. This is the one where you have some land in, in Indonesia. It's worth a certain price and you're planning to sell it. Now, in order to hedge the risk of currency movements, you enter into a futures contract to sell Indonesian rupiah. So you're going to have some currency coming in from the land when you sell it. By entering into a contract to sell Indonesian currency, you're taking the opposite position that should offset the risk. Now, let's clarify a few things about the question. The question is not asking you, should you hedge? The question already tells you what the economics are. You have the land and you have entered into a futures contract. So the question is basically saying, should you designate a hedge? Okay, let's just clarify. Um, and then it says, what sort of hedge should it be? So let's clarify the difference between fair value hedges and cash flow hedges. In a cash flow hedge, you are hedging something that's going to happen that is going to impact the income statement. So a sale or a purchase in a foreign currency or what have you. However, if you are hedging something that you already have, then it's a fair value hedge. And in fact, if you look at this question, we are hedging land. That land isn't going to impact the income statement. Or maybe a little bit with the gain or loss on sale. But basically, we're worried that the value of an asset we have is going to change. So this is clearly a fair value hedge. So we've got this relationship between the land that we own in Indonesia and the futures contract for selling Indonesian currency. Okay, so the hedge is there. And it's a fair value hedge. That's the economics. So the question is asking you about the accounting. Should you designate it as a hedge? So what does that mean? If you name it as a hedge, if you designate it as a hedge, you are explicitly recognising the relationship between the hedged item, the land, and the hedging instrument, in this case the futures contract. Now what does that give you? Well, you know with a cash flow hedge, if you designate that relationship, it gives you an advantage because in a cash flow hedge, you're hedging something that's going to, sorry, that's going to happen later, but you're hedging it earlier. So you enter into this economic thing that, that protects you against changes in the value of the thing that's going to happen. But since you've entered into the hedging instrument earlier, gains and losses here in early days don't cancel out with anything here because the hedged item hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen later. So the problem is economically, you've gotten rid of risk, but if you account for changes in the hedging instrument, then before the hedged item happens, there's going to be gains and losses here that aren't balanced by anything here. So if it's a designated cash flow hedge and it qualifies, you're allowed to put the gain or loss across into the hedging reserve until the hedged item appears, and then you move it into there. That's not what this question about is talking about. This question is talking about a fair value hedge. So what does a fair value hedge give you that, that you wouldn't have if you dis didn't designate it as a hedge? If you designate something as a fair value hedge and you are recording movements in the hedging instrument, you are allowed to record movements in the hedged item as well. Even if that hedged item would normally be recorded at historical cost. And that's the case here with the Indonesian land. The Indonesian land is a foreign currency, non-monetary amount. So if the exchange rate changes, we would not normally remeasure the land. However, the fact that we have entered into a fair value hedge allows us to, re to remeasure the land if we designate the relationship between the future, the hedging instrument, and the land, the hedged item. So that means when we record a gain on the hedging instrument, we're allowed to record a loss on the land. When we record a loss on the hedging instrument, the future, we're allowed to record a gain on the land. Okay? So basically, what designating it as a hedge allows you to do is allows you to account for such a way that the accounting reflects the trade-off. You've got a gain offsetting a loss or a loss offsetting a gain. 
So the net effect on the income statement will be zero. I hope this makes sense.